gonna make some chicken tortilla soup. It is so, so good, y'all. Um, and it's really, really easy to throw together. You just stick everything in a pot. This could probably be put in the crock pot too. I just haven't tried it yet. I wanted to, but I waited too long today to try that. We've got several ingredients here. I'm using rotisserie chicken, but you can use canned chicken or, you know, cook some up in the Instant Pot or do something like that if you want to. But I'm just using some rotisserie chicken that we've pulled apart. And this is for our family of four with, there will be leftovers. Um, I'm using a Dutch oven here. I'm gonna start out with 32 ounces of chicken broth. And this recipe is easily doubled too, if you want to make double or you have a bigger family, that sort of thing. And very versatile in the kind of ingredients you can use. You can obviously change out different types of beans and that sort of thing. We've got a can of cream of chicken soup. There it went. I've got the um, heat on medium right now. And then I've got a little bit of sour cream. I'm just gonna do a few scoops of that. Uh, I got the inspiration for this one from um, Sierra Jo Dominguez on um, Instagram. She posts yummy recipes every once in a while, like in real time when they're making them with their family. And I've kind of tweaked it a little bit, you know, to our family. Just like you could do easily too, because she made hers a little different, but. This is how we are making it, and I've made this one other time, and wished I would have filmed it then, because it is seriously so, so good. And I like to whisk that around. I'm not crazy about cream of chicken soup myself either. So, by mixing this all together, that helps out a lot. Okay, I've got all my cans open. Now I'm just gonna start dumping them in because that's how easy it is. We've got Rotel, but you could use like diced green chilies if you would prefer. So Rotel, one can of corn and I did drain it. I'm using some white chili beans that are also in chili sauce. Um, so I didn't drain that one too much. I just did a little bit off the top. I'm just gonna go ahead and add that whole can. And then I've got a can of black beans that I did drain and rinse that I'll add in. Like I said, you can use kidney beans. I, um, last time I think I also used some cannellini beans. Seriously, any kind that you want. And um, I'm gonna stir this around and then we'll get our chicken out and add some of that. And this is a big bowl of chicken, so I'm not gonna be using all of it. Probably a couple cups of chicken, if I had to guess. And this is just one of those traditional rotisserie chickens from Walmart. Feel free to add as much or as little as you want. <laughs> so I'll have enough to do another recipe of some sort of something some other time. Stir it around. Now that I've got all the beans and everything incorporated, it's time to season it up. So once again, use the seasonings that you like. Um, this is just what I'm going to be using. I've got a little bit of ranch seasoning here because that's one of my favorite seasonings to use. <laughs> Do a good little amount of that. Um, got some onion powder. And I'm just eyeballing all of these. There's many recipes like where I'm like, I need to follow that to a T. But soup is not one of those for whatever reason. <laughs> I'm more... Um, a little bit more lax on what I'm using and how much. Then I've got some ground cumin. A little less of that than other stuff because it kind of goes far in my opinion. A little bit of paprika. Garlic powder. And then some black pepper. I don't really feel a need to salt it even though I had it sitting out use just because you know the chicken broth is pretty salty anyway um, and just stir it all up love how colorful this soup is too the last thing we're going to add before just letting it sit and heat through is some fiesta cheese um, just going to do a couple handfuls of it and stir that in real good And then at the end, if we feel like we want more, we can add more to our own bowls of it. So yummy goodness. Ugh, so good. Okay, 
Now I'm gonna put the lid on and I will probably come back and like stir it every little bit. But I don't, like I said earlier, I don't want it too high of heat because I don't want to burn the bottom. So we're just gonna let this chill probably for about 20 minutes and then I'll see where it's at after that. I'd say it's been about 20 minutes of it sitting with the lid on. I took it off every probably five minutes to make sure the bottom wasn't sticking. And it is nice and heated through now. Looking really, really yummy. Got mine in a bowl. I wish I had some like cute soup bowls. Need to look into getting some. But this is just like our everyday cereal bowls and everything too. You can pretty much top it however you want. I've got mine topped with some of these for crunch and just to look pretty with colorful. And then some of these tortilla strips that actually have a little bit of flavor, the Santa Fe style. And I topped it with a little bit of cheese. You could do sour cream, whatever you like to top your soup with. But now we're gonna dig in and get to eating. <laughs> Today's soup that I'm making in the crock pot is my absolute favorite soup. We've had it so many times now because we all love it. Um, so I'm going to start out by cooking up this mild Italian sausage in a pan and we'll go from there. I've got the meat cooking. I've also got my block of cream cheese sitting out too so it'll soften a little bit to make it easier to cut. And this is the most difficult part of the whole recipe and it's super simple because you just have to brown it. And if you have some like in the freezer already cooked. Then you could just dump that in as well, but all the other ingredients will be dump and go. Just dump them on in and leave it. My favorite kind. Now that the meat's cooked, just drain it all really good. I'm using Tamara's little trick. I've been using that ever since I saw her do that with the um, aluminum foil on a bowl with the strainer. It really helps with the cleanup. For sure. Now we're ready to just dump everything in, starting with the Italian sausage. 32 ounces of chicken broth. The recipe that I got this from actually calls for two of these cans of the um, tomatoes, but we're not really crazy about tomatoes, so I just do one for our family. But it is the diced with basil, garlic, and oregano. Um, I still like to add a little bit of seasoning too, myself. So I guess I've kind of switched up that recipe a little bit. You want to make sure to cut up your blocks of cream cheese and put them in, in cubes. I'm not really sure what that actually does for it. Maybe it mixes it together a little better. I don't know. And this is normally where you would add your frozen bag of tortellini noodles. But I don't know what in the world I was thinking and I didn't check the freezer first and I could have swore we had some. Whoops. BRB running to the store real quick. <laughs> 30 minutes later and I'm finally back with the tortellini pasta. That is probably one of the most ridiculous things I've ever done. <laughs> Blame it on pregnancy brain if you want. But I think I'm, hopefully I learned my lesson. I usually like take out all of the, every ingredient you know that I have before starting and I didn't today. And I really thought we had the noodles, but we didn't. So I've got my frozen bag. Just gonna dump those on top. Oh goodness. You definitely get real life over here <laughs> on my channel. I definitely have never claimed to be perfect or like a phenomenal cook. I'm just sharing what we do for our family over here throughout the week and everything with cooking. And I like to share that with you. So if you like that, then <laughs> make sure you're subscribed. <laughs> you just want to stir it all up really good. And then we're going to stick the lid on it and cook it on low for four hours. And like the last 30 minutes, we'll come back like three and a half hours later and probably add the spinach then. There's 30 minutes left on the soup, so I'm gonna take the lid off. It smells so good. Give it a good stir. And then I'm gonna add a few handfuls of spinach. Um, you can do like two to four cups, just based on what you want, but personally, I'm just adding it for the health benefits rather than the taste of it. <laughs> So I'm gonna do a couple handfuls, stir that around, and you wanna let that cook for about 30 minutes. I'm gonna leave the uh, lid off though, because that'll thicken up the soup a little, which I personally prefer it to be a little more soupier, 
but if you do want it to be thick that's how you would do that um, or you can do like a cornstarch slurry whatever you need to do but I love the soupiness of this one most of the time I leave the lid on it to be honest It is done and ready to be served now. Seriously, smells amazing. This definitely is my number one top favorite soup, which has got me a little curious. What is your all's top favorite soup? What would you consider it to be? And yes, this is gonna be a big old bowl. Mmm. <laughs> Does that not look good? So, so good. This is gonna be our quick and easy supper tonight before we run out to Porter's first basketball practice. Also, I thought it would be good to mention, I'm using the frozen tortellini, but you could also still use the refrigerated kind. Um, you just obviously wouldn't want to put it in at the beginning like I did. You'd want to wait until probably the 30 minutes when you add the spinach as well. Okay, today I'm going to be making a crock pot potato soup. And for that, I'm starting out with my potatoes. I've already cut up like three-fourths of an onion, chopped it up real good. And then I've got, I've got eight potatoes, but last time I made it, I used six because they were really big. But these are pretty small. And then I've got a couple of medium-sized ones. Um, I peeled about half of them and leaving the others with the peelings on them. That's just my preference. You do what you want for your family. I'm just gonna cut these up into chunks and then we'll start putting everything in the crock pot. I personally love potato soup and haven't made this in a while, so I'm pretty excited. It's so, so good. There is one kind of soup, though, that I still really want, like, a good recipe for, and that's broccoli and cheese soup. I haven't found, like, one that I love. I love paneer bread soup, but I think I've even tried, like, one of those copycat recipes, and it just didn't turn out the same. So if you've got a good broccoli and cheese soup, let me know in the comments down below. Send it to me somehow. I would absolutely love that. Gonna add all the potatoes and onions into the crock pot. Along with half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of pepper. Or to taste, that's up to you. We need some more pepper. And then I'm gonna do a couple teaspoons of minced garlic. Or a few, because we like it and two cups of chicken broth. So I'm just gonna stick the lid on it now and then cook that on high for four hours. And then we'll come back and add a few other things. We've got some heavy whipping cream, cheese, and cream cheese to put in it. And then it's gonna be really, really yummy. Now that it's been four hours, I'm gonna add in half a cup of shredded sharp cheddar cheese, a block of cream cheese. You do wanna make sure that block of cream cheese is softened to room temperature because we're just gonna mash all this together and that's and that's gonna be it. And then one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream. And then all you gotta do is mash it up. I'm using a potato masher, but if I had an immersion blender, that's probably what I would use because I feel like that would go a lot quicker. But this way you can kind of just get the consistency that you want and mash up some, leave some in chunks, however you want it. Just keep going at it for a little bit. It actually mashes up pretty well and the cream cheese melts right up because these potatoes are popping hot. <laughs> and this is enough for our family of four to have some leftovers because the kids probably aren't going to eat much of it. Um, but if you've got a bigger family then you can easily double this recipe too. Just took about two minutes of mashing and it's not even really. And it is ready to go. To our consistency anyway, <laughs> that we like. And if you want it more soupy, then you can easily add in more liquid as well. Like when you're starting this out, maybe more chicken broth. Or at the end, add some more whipping cream or something else to go with it. I'm just gonna top mine with a little bit more shredded cheddar cheese. 
I usually do some cornbread on the side or like crumbled on top of it too, but I didn't make any. But I will be having this for leftovers tomorrow and I'm gonna make some for tomorrow. But instead I'm gonna do some crumbled up bacon. It's the kind that I just cooked in the microwave. And then I like to do green onions sometimes on it, just chopped up on it. But yeah, everybody loves potato soup, right? Well, probably not everybody, but it's definitely one of our favorites. Yummy.